one anyway. <laughs> don't mind. I've got no quality we, control We have whatsoever. very, very low standards here, although that's not in any way a slight on uh, our next guest at all. Uh, more reaction to the Channel 4 documentary about Bedfordshire Police that's going out tonight. The family of Leon Briggs, who died after being taken into custody at Luton Police Station, where the programme is filmed, say it's inappropriate. Well, we heard from Colette Paul uh, a few minutes ago. We can speak now to Ollie Martins, the Police and Crime Commissioner for Bedfordshire. Why is this documentary going ahead, Ollie? Well, um, this can be a very short interview, actually, because I just heard the Chief Constable. Yep. And, um... She's good, isn't she? If she is, very yep. good. And I agree with every word she says. I mean, I think this is about, um, the force being transparent, showing the public what they do. I mean, one of the things that I've felt, uh, since I was elected, um, nearly two years ago, is, you know, I, I get a kind of fly-on-the-wall view of policing, and I've long felt, you know, if the public could see, get that fly-on-the-wall view that I get, um, then, you know, I think that would help um, raise levels of public confidence um, in policing and, and awareness of what our police do. And I think, I think that's important. You know, public confidence is uh, in policing is a real premium at the moment. Um, you know, because I mention it often enough that... Um, even though we're recruiting to frontline positions, overall police strength in Bedfordshire is falling at the moment, um, and and will have fallen between by by 2015. We'll have, have we'll have a hundred or so fewer officers than we had in 2010. So we absolutely need public confidence in the police to be as high as it is can be. Is this the way to do it? Because I, I I am worried. Worried. I'm I'm slightly concerned that it's it's naive to take this project on. I've worked in TV. I know how vicious and ruthless the producers can be. And they'll say one thing to the person they're interviewing, but hoping they get something out. Mm. And they could film 100 hours, and 20 minutes of that could be bad. That's the 20 minutes that they'll focus on. Well, I think the, the force did a lot of due diligence around this. Um, I, I became a... I wasn't previously a viewer of 24 Hours in A&E, yep. but I became a viewer of 24 Hours in A&E uh, to see what it was that, that Garden Productions do. Um, and I think that that's the kind of programme that they're making um, for, of Bedfordshire Police. Mm. You know, it's not... It's far less sensationalist. I mean, yes, you know, there's got to be an entertainment value, um, but it's far more, you know, focusing on personalities um, than it is focusing on um, the s sensational side of policing and I, and I think that's, you know, that's important too. How many episodes have you seen? I haven't seen any. Oh. So you don't, you don't actually know what it's focusing on if you haven't seen any. Why, why, why did well, they not send you the, the, the preview DVDs? Well, you know, this is, my role is strategic. The Chief right. Constable's role is operational. The Chief Constable uh, has seen uh, um, some of the rushes and some you of the You didn't episodes. think it was appropriate for you to watch them? I'm no, sure the I mean, press department well, would have sent you a DVD. That's that's the difference between my role and the chief constable's yeah. role. You know, she has she's in charge of the operational policing. This is an operational matter, um, but it's one where I absolutely support the decision that she's made. <laughs> oh, Ollie, I'm am confused. If 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 they made a documentary about Cass, it would be nothing to do with me, but I'd watch it. Do you not? Or if they made a documentary about BBC Local Radio, I'd, this is one. Of, this is your police force. Do you not think to? to, to, to what, I, I seems it seems strange to me that you didn't want to watch it. Well, I do want to watch but, it. But they would, have sent it. You they would have sent you DVDs. But that's the, you know, as I say, you know, that's the difference between... I, I don't get down in the, um, down in the detail. The operational day-to-day -day running of the force is a matter for the Chief Constable. But this isn't about the running of the force. This is how your, one of your forces, how your force is presented to the public. It's a huge uh, gamble, as, as, as Colette Paula said. It, it's a bit of a risk. And I'm really surprised that you didn't either get sent or didn't phone up Garden Productions or Channel 4 Press Department. So can we have a DVD of the first two episodes, please? Because that's how, that's how it works. I'm sure, I'm sure I could have done, but I didn't think, you know, that's just not appropriate to my role. There is Why? a very... Well, because there's a very hard divide, and it's set out in the legislation, about the difference between my strategic role and the chief constable. This isn't about this isn't about roles. This is about a representation of, of your police force on national television that could go one way or it could go the other. And you didn't want to check it out in advance? No, because that's the chief constable's job. <laughs> you know, I don't... I, don't uh, I wouldn't have had a... Uh, a veto over, no, she hasn't over got a veto what was either. going on. Over what was going on, uh, the 
agreement that she referred to that, sh that uh, the force has with uh, Garden Productions is an agreement between uh, the force and Garden Productions, not between me and Garden Productions. So this is... Um, but it's your police is, force. Yeah, and it's, it's the police force for which I'm responsible and where I'm the bridge exactly. between the public. It's the police force for which you're but responsible, chief, but you don't want to watch the show in advance. You're, you're going to watch it like any other punter when it goes out on telly. Yeah, because the chief com it's the chief constable's responsibility to be to in watch charge a of... To watch a documentary do about your, one of your police forces. Well, and as I say, the agreement is between the police force, not me, as the commissioner. But you're uh, responsible for the... Pol I'm really sorry to push this. I'm so shocked by this. You're responsible for this police force. They're going to be seen by I 8 million people tonight, I and you don't know what it's I going to show. Set, I set the strategic priorities, but the day-to-day -day responsibility for what the force does is a matter for the chief constable, who is a very senior public figure in her own right. So you have no idea what this programme's going to show tonight? I've got some idea what it's going to show. I mean, the Chief Constable, as in a lot of matters, keeps me well briefed. So what has she told you is in tonight's show? Well, the stuff that you've been, the stuff that you've been discussing, and some of it, you know, because... Did she, did she phone you up to say, the, this is give you a rundown of episode one? How did that work? Because of that issue around authenticity, you know, as, as she's just been discussing with you, there are, there are some things that um, she isn't perhaps that happy or comfortable with, but because we wanted the authenticity, um, that's what you've got. So you had a phone conversation with Colette Paul where she told you what was happening in, in tonight's episode? No, I was, sit I was sitting in her office. And okay, so you're in an office and she told you what happened in tonight's episode? Pretty much, yeah. And, so, and some of the other episodes as well. Okay. I'm really shocked, Ollie, that you wouldn't want to watch it before it went out and that you've, 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 you've been told secondhand. Because this is your police force. This is you. This is you that's being shown yeah, on a but, documentary. But I have to take... You know, my, my role is strategic. I have to, you know, like a backseat driver. You're really. still looking out, the, out on the road, though, aren't you, if you're a backseat driver? You're still having <laughs> a look at what's going on. Well, I've, ha I've had... I've, I'm content with how uh, the Chief Constable and the Force has handled it. I'm confident what we're going to see tonight. It's, it sounds like it's gone uh, as I uh, would have anticipated it okay. to. Is it OK for um, uh, Detective Constable Gary Hales to refer to the fiancé of uh, um, someone who's been shot as some bit of skirt? Well, I think the Chief Constable just explained why an officer may be using the vernacular as part of uh, an interview strategy. OK. What, uh, so, so uh, Rory, what time is it on tonight? Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock on Channel 4. Are you going to be watching it? I, uh, I've set it up on uh, Sky Plus. <laughs> Who's talking? Someone, do you, can you hear a robot voice? I've got no idea what that was. Sorry, I do apologise. We were interrupted at the end there by a robot voice. I have no <laughs> idea where that came from. Ollie, I appreciate your time this morning. Thank you very much. It's BBC Three Counties Radio. Let's get the travel. <laughs> Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. The Milton Keynes is queuing at the moment on the A509, just at the A5. We did get reports in that the traffic lights weren't working properly, causing these delays. The M1 heading southbound, very heavy on the sensors between the Toddington Services and Junction 10 for Luton Airport Spur Road. The M25 heading anti-clockwise, it's looking very slow on the sensors this morning, between Junction 22 for St Albans and Junction 6 the M40. The M25 heading clockwise, heavy around junction 25 for Enfield. That's heading through the roadworks area there. Um, having a look in Boreham Wood, it is queuing at the moment on the Barnet Bypass. Um, heading southbound between Stirling Corner and Mill Hill Circus. Also on the trains, disruption leaves Midland trains between Luton and St Pancras International. Also affecting Thames Link trains at the moment. Nicola Richards, BBC Three Counties Radio. Across beds, hearts and bugs. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. I'm Lee Agnew. The headlines, Bedfordshire's Chief Constable says she's not worried about how a new TV series will portray Luton Police. The family of Leon Briggs, who died in police custody, say they're filled with anger about the series. 
It's feared that a shortage of social workers is putting vulnerable children at risk. Ofsted found that 261 children in need of help in Buckinghamshire haven't been allocated a social worker. Commuters on the Thames Incline face delays of up to half an hour this morning. The slower line has been closed after someone was hit by a train near Sandridge in Hertfordshire. And the weather will be misty with scattered showers today, but sunny at times as well. Top temperatures around 21 degrees Celsius. That's 54 degrees Fahrenheit. Three Counties Sports. BBC Three Counties Radio. Europe's golfers have retained the Ryder Cup after beating the United States at Glen Eagles. Jamie Donaldson earned the match-winning point to secure a third successive victory for Europe. The world number one, Rory McIlroy, who won his singles match against Ricky Fowler, says they owe the win to the leadership shown by Captain Paul McGinley. It's just been incredible, an incredible week. Um, I can't say enough about our Captain Paul McGinley. He has just been unbelievable. Uh, he really has, and he deserved nothing less than this. He deserved the win. You know, he's put so much hard work into it the last two years, and uh, the players really stepped up for him today. On to football, and Burnley remain bottom of the Premier League and without a win after a 4 0 defeat at West Brom. Watford drew two all with Blackburn in the Championship. It was defeat for the MK Dons, but victory for Wickham, Stevenage, and Luton Town. The Hatters play Stevenage at the Lamex this coming Saturday, and first team coach Haken Horetin is keen to play down the local rivalry. But you know, for us, it's just another game. We've got to go there. Be professional, like I said, like we've always been, and try and do a job and come out. Obviously, it's a big occasion for the club, you know, especially for the supporters. It is a local derby. But on our minds, we just got to go there and do a job. And finally, the men's marathon world record has been broken by Kenya's Dennis Kometo. His time of two hours, two minutes and 57 seconds was 26 seconds quicker than the previous record. BBC Three Counties News and Sport, with more at nine o'clock. <coughs> Call 08459 455 555. BBC Three Counties Radio. I have to... I appreciate Ollie, Ollie Martin's coming in. He always... Pretty much always does when we ask him. Pretty much always does. Unlike, um, um, was it Stansfeld from uh, Thames Valley? Never comes in. Never comes in. But Ollie Martin and uh, David Lloyd pretty much always come in. I am so shocked... I mean, this, people may think I labour that point a little bit too much, but knowing how TV works, I am so shocked he has not watched the first two episodes well, of that programme. Whenever you do a programme, you get sent the first two episodes on DVD. And if you don't, you get fun up production. Hello, I'm Ollie Martins. I'm the PCC. Can I have the first two apps on DVD, please? I mean, just out of curiosity, wouldn't you want to know? It's his police force. And I know he's, it, it's, you know, operational things that's Colette Paul. And she's obviously watched it good for her. It's his police force. It's him. May not be him physically. It's him that's being represented on that programme. And he's not watched it. Gosh. It's the fact that he doesn't see why he should have. If you were going to be doing an interview about anything... Yeah. That, I mean, if you could, you would, wouldn't you? If you could watch it, you would watch it. Um, uh, Menaz has tweeted, uh, Ollie Martin's shockingly unprepared for an interview. Reading from his job description looks like he doesn't understand his role. I, I, I've got a lot of time for Ollie Martin's because he has come in. We have had some really awkward exchanges about things and he comes in and it's that, you know, it, I, I don't particularly enjoy my thing when I've got someone set opposite me and I'm having to ask them really awkward, uncomfortable questions and they're squirming. I don't get a kick out of it and then it's really awkward, awkward afterwards. But he always comes in, we always shake hands and uh, he, he keeps coming back. Yeah. But that was odd. That was odd. I wait four five nine four double five five zero five. Don't forget your homework is to watch that programme tonight at nine o'clock.
and they'll say one thing to the person they're interviewing, but hoping they get something out. Mm. And they could film 100 hours, and 20 minutes of that could be bad. That's the 20 minutes that they'll focus on. Well, I think the, the force did a lot of due diligence around this. Um, I, I became a... I wasn't previously a viewer of 24 Hours in A&E, yep. but I became a viewer of 24 Hours in A&E uh, to see what it was that, that garden productions do. Um, we're recruiting to frontline positions. Overall police strength in Bedfordshire is falling at the moment um, and, and will have fallen between by... By 2015, we'll have have we'll have a hundred or so fewer officers than we had in 2010. So we absolutely need public confidence in the police to be as high as it Is can be. Is this the way to do it? Because I, I I am worried worried. I'm I'm slightly concerned that it's it's naive to take this project on. I've worked in TV. I know how vicious and ruthless the producers can be. One anyway. <laughs> mind. I've got no quality We, we have whatsoever. very, very low standards here, although that's not in any way a slight on uh, our next guest at all. Uh, more reaction to the Channel 4 documentary about Bedfordshire Police that's going out tonight. The family of Leon Briggs, who died after being taken into custody at Luton Police Station, where the programme is filmed, say it's inappropriate. Well, we heard from Colette Paul uh, a few minutes ago. We can speak now to Ollie Martins, the Police and Crime Commissioner for Bedfordshire. What? Of policing. And I've long felt, you know, if the public could see, get that fly on the wall view that I get, um, then, you know, I think that would help um, raise levels of public confidence um, in policing and, and awareness of what our police do. And I think, I think that's important. You know, public confidence is uh, in policing is at a real premium at the moment. Um, you know, because I mention it often enough that. Um, even though Why is this documentary going ahead, Ollie? Well, um, this can be a very short interview, actually, because I just heard the Chief Constable. Yep. And, um, She's good, isn't she? If she is, very yep. good. And cool. I agree with every word she says. I mean, I think this is about um, the force being transparent, showing the public what they do. I mean, one of the things that I've felt uh, since I was elected um, nearly two years ago is, you know, I, I get a kind of fly-on-the-wall view 